Good afternoon, everyone. I know there's been a lot of questions, a lot of confusion about Donald Trump's Muslim ban and refugee ban. So I want to take a few moments to give you a quick update about what's happened, what's going on, how we're responding, most importantly, how it's going to affect you and what your rights are and how you can protect yourself and your family. And this applies in particular to U.S. citizens and it also applies uh, to uh, legal permanent residents. I want you all to understand this critical information. Please share this. We need to educate the community. We're getting an overwhelming amount of phone calls for helps, emails. We cannot keep up. And, and right now it's very difficult to even answer individual questions. So please share this. We need this message to get out to everyone, especially visitors, especially green card holders, and even American citizens. And I'll explain why. Again, I have 144 people watching this. Click share immediately. We need this message to get out to everyone. Um, number one, as you all know, yesterday, Donald Trump uh, in his campaign promised to implement a complete and total shutdown of Muslims entering America, a Muslim ban. He acted to make good on that promise yesterday with just what really one of his uh, spokespersons said is the beginning step. And he has implemented a ban on visitors, immigrants and non-immigrants coming from seven Muslim majority countries. Now it's critical to note two things. Number one, six out of those seven countries have consistently been bombed by the United States over the last decade or so. Number two, there has not been a fatal terrorist attack in the United States from any citizen of those seven uh, banned countries since before 1975. So since 1975 to today in 2016, there has not been one confirmed fatal terrorist attack in the United States by a citizen of those seven countries. So this is not about security. It's not about uh, protecting our country. It's about paranoia, fear, and hatred. Please uh, understand this and, and share this fact. Please also take a moment as I begin to share the Know Your Rights portion of this conversation. Share this, con uh, share this video. We need everybody to learn this critical information that we're sharing right now. So that's the first thing. Uh, a com uh, seven Muslim majority countries uh, have been banned from sending visitors to the United States. Now, how does this apply? And as you all know, also the refugee program uh, has t temporarily been suspended. Um, it, and it's critical to note these facts. Again, this is not about security. And I'm about to begin the Know Your Rights portion of this in just a minute. I want people to join in. So please click share. There's 200 people. If each and every one of these 200 people that are watching us live right now click share, we can make sure this message reaches everyone that this message needs to reach. Um, this isn't about safety and security. Again, recognize that the chances of being killed by a refugee according to the Cato Institute, is one in 3.6 billion with a B. Again, it's one in 3.6 billion with a B. That's the chances of being killed by a refugee in the United States. Secondly, the chances of being killed by an immigrant in America in a terrorist attack, you're actually more likely to die from your clothes accidentally being set on fire or being struck by a railway car than by being killed by an immigrant coming into the United States. This is not about security. It's about uh, pandering to fear, hatred, and Islamophobia. It's bad for our country. Uh, it, it hurts who we are. I often say our enemies can never destroy us. We can only destroy ourselves if we allow fear and hatred to turn us away from each other and scare us. All right, we got 238 people. I'm going to start in the Know Your Rights section. Number one, the ban essentially about seven Muslim majority countries. You can look up what those countries are. Uh, Somalia, Sudan, um, Syria, Iran, uh, Yemen. Uh, again, check out the list. Uh, it, uh, that list can change. So understand these few things. Number one, it, whether you're a visitor or you're a legal permanent resident, means a green card holder, you can actually be denied entry into the United States based on that executive order. So what does that mean? It means if you're in America and you're from one of those seven countries, a citizen from one of those seven countries, and you're here as a legal visitor or you're here as a green card holder, as long as you can stay in America legally, do not exit because there's no guarantee you can return. If you're even a green card holder and you're outside of America, please contact your immigration attorney to ask them for legal advice and protection before returning into America. That's the number one rule. If you're in America as a green card holder or as a uh, or as a legal visitor, do not leave if you're from those seven countries because you can be denied re-entry. If you're outside of those seven countries and you're a green card holder, please contact your lawyer before trying to return so that they can give you the legal advice that you need about how to safely enter the U.S. 
Uh, there have been reports of people who have green cards being denied. There have been reports of people who have green card being entered in. Now, if you are on a flight and you're entering America and, they, and you're a green card holder and they try to get you to sign a form to let go of your green card or say it'll make your life easier, do not do that. Say, simply demand that you want a hearing with an immigration judge. Insist that you want a hearing with an immigration judge. Do not give up your green card. Uh, never physically resist, but I'm saying don't wave away your rights uh, to, uh, to your green card. That's the second critical point. Again, please share. We need this information to get out to the community. Um, next, so we said if you're a, if you're a permanent resident or uh, slash green card holder or you're a visitor and you're in America, don't leave. That's point number one. Number two, if you're outside, contact your immigration attorney before trying to come back in. Number three, if you get stuck at customs and you're a permanent resident or a green card holder, don't sign away the green card. Demand a hearing with an immigration judge if you are denied entry. Next. What if you're a green card holder or a, or a visitor, but you're not from those seven countries? Well, that list of those seven countries can change within 30 days. So if I were you, I would not make, if, if, if I were you and you're a green card holder outside of America right now, but you're, 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 your country of citizenship is not one of those seven countries, then I would get back as soon as possible. Come back before uh, the thir these 30 days. If you're inside America and you're from, and you're a green card holder, from a Muslim majority country that's not on those seven, uh, that's not from those seven countries, then I would advise against leaving at this time, uh, simply because it's, uh, they can change what those seven countries are. So Pakistan is not on today, but maybe it could be on tomorrow. Um, we just simply don't know and just not worth the risk at this time. So that's the latest point that I also wanted to emphasize is that the list of who, which countries this affects can change after 30 days. And even if your country is not currently listed there, it can be. Um, so if you're from a Muslim majority country and you're outside of America right now and you have a green card and you are um, able to return right now, come back right now before those 30 days. If you are uh, outside of America right now, uh, or if you're in America right now and you're from and you're a permanent resident, but not from those um, seven countries, remember your country could be added later. So be careful and I would advise against leaving. That's the main advice at this point for um, uh, non-citizens, especially for those seven uh, countries. Uh, if you're in America, don't leave. If you're outside of America, uh, consult with an attorney before trying to return and don't wave away your green card. And if you face any issues or you have family members facing issues, contact uh, the civil rights organizations out there. Contact CARE, go to CARE.com, uh, contact the, your local CARE office if you live in a particular state, contact SUNY's uh, CLEAR, uh, C-L-E-A-R, contact the ADC, contact the Muslim Advocates, uh, contact MLFA. I don't care who you contact, but reach out for legal help. Let's document and report each and every one of those incidents. If you have a family member who's being stuck and not being allowed in, Invite people to come to the airport. Go on Facebook Live. Let people see you crying. Let people see what you're going through. Let people see the injustice that we are uh, uh, facing. Uh, I also want to give a quick warning to U.S. citizens, and then I'm going to jump into some things that we are doing. Uh, U.S. citizens, we have reports of U.S. citizens coming into America as citizens and being selected for secondary inspection where they're being grilled and interrogated about their family members, about their social media usage, about their religious and their political beliefs, uh, and then asked for their cell phones and being forced to turn over their cell phones and, uh, and their passwords and unlocking it. If you're an American citizen, remember, you absolutely have to be let into America. Please, we have 400 people watching this video. Share it. We need this message to get out to everyone. May God bless us and help us keep America a free and just nation for all people. Just click the bottom, click share, invite everybody to watch this. If you're an American citizen, remember this. What they, you have to be let into America. If you're an American citizen, you cannot be denied entry into America. Therefore, if you are coming into America and they uh, select you for secondary inspection or a random inspection, at the primary inspection, answer basic questions, where you came from, where you're going, never lie to them, be completely truthful. Uh, you have to declare whatever you have to declare. If you as a group are carrying over $10,000, you have to declare it. If you're bringing in f fruits and vegetables, you have to declare it. So make the required declarations that you, and answer truthfully what uh, basic questions you're asked at the primary. If you're selected for secondary inspection, remember this. 
as an American citizen, they must let you in. So absolutely, under no circumstance, answer any further questions at secondary inspection about your religious beliefs, your political beliefs, your family, your con uh, their contact information. If you're an American citizen, they must let you in. Do not answer any questions about your religious or your political beliefs or, uh, or your social media usage. Simply say, sir, I'm an American citizen. Let me speak to your supervisor. I have verified my identity. I want to come home. And that's it. And they have to let you in. Yes, they may claim that they can hold you. But the reality is those who answer questions often get held longer because they're trying to milk as much information about the Muslim community as possible so they can pass it on to the FBI. Don't fall for that. Okay. As an American citizen, they have to let you in. Do not answer any questions. And remember, even the ACLU tells people that you are not required. First of all, never physically resist and never lie to them. And if they ask for your cell phone or any material, you have to physically provide it. But you are not obligated by law according to the ACLU, to provide your cell phone password or to unlock it. And the fact is, if you provide it, they may keep you longer, they may keep the cell phone overnight so they can download the data. So my advice is yes, they can keep your cell phone regardless, but you're better off not giving them um, your cell phone password or your cell phone data. You can even travel with a just a, a phone that you don't really need or you don't really care about in case it gets held up with them. They may ask you, is this your regular phone? Or say, sir, I'm an American citizen. I've answered, I'm not answering further questions. And that's it. It's none of their darn business. It's none of their business. We see this is a policy driven by Islamophobia, by fear, by hatred. It doesn't make America any safer. It's ineffective. Again, none of the countries uh, of those, none of those seven countries had a citizen commit a t fatal terrorist attack in America since 1975. Um, this isn't about fear or hatred. The chances of being killed by a refugee is one in 3.6 billion. This is not about making America safer. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to wrap this up because I want this to go viral. I want you to share this. I want you to educate. I want you to empower the community. We will overcome. We will protect uh, what makes America great. We will challenge issues of injustice. And uh, rest assured, we have amazing lawyers working nationwide throughout this weekend preparing very strong lawsuits, very strong lawsuits to challenge this injustice. We need your help. We need your prayers. We need your support. We need you to file uh, complaints. We need you to file complaints if you face this injustice and contact CARE, contact your various civil rights organizations. Let us know what you're going through and how we can help. But just rest assured, we are planning uh, lawsuits. We're also in working with interfaith allies uh, to challenge this. Um, so please uh, rest assured, have no fear, stand strong. Remember, we are Americans. And it's our duty to protect this country against all enemies, foreign and domestic. It's our duty to challenge injustice. That's what makes America great. And we will do it. We will overcome together. I'm going to very quickly uh, ask you all again. We have 500 people watching this live. Please share. We need this information to go viral. And I'm going to very quickly summarize the key points. And I'm going to end this. So, inshallah, you can share it. Uh, number one, yes, this can apply. The ban of seven Muslim-majority countries can apply to non-citizen legal permanent residents, including green card holders. So if you are a green card holder or a visitor legally in America right now, do not leave America. If you're outside of America, contact your immigration attorney before coming back in. Next, know that that uh, the seven country list can be expanded after 30 days. So just because you're not from one of those seven countries and you're a green card holder doesn't mean you're in the clear to travel next month because your country could be added. So keep that in mind. Again, highly advise people legally here not to leave and highly advise, uh, again, people legally here who are not American citizens not to leave, even green card holders and those who are outside to contact a lawyer before trying to return. Next, if you get stuck at, at customs and you're a green card holder and they ask you to waive your rights or uh, sign anything to give up your green card, do not do so. Insist on seeing an immigration attorney. And lastly, if you're an American citizen and you're picked for secondary inspection and asked questions about your religious and political beliefs or your social media, remember, you don't have to give it to them. And if you face injustice, go ahead. Uh, and if your family members are stuck at the airport, contact CARE, contact MLFA, contact CLEAR. I'm listing all these organizations because we're all getting overwhelmed. Uh, but keep reaching out to, to community members and leaders and let us know. File the appropriate complaints. We're going to challenge and overcome this together. We are preparing a lawsuit. Pray for us. Pray for our success. Pray for your brothers and sisters. And remember, this is the time we're going to make America great. 
by challenging these unjust, oppressive, discriminatory, illegal policies. We will make America great by making sure that it remains a free and just nation for all people, regardless of their race or religion. I always say our enemies can never destroy us. We can only destroy ourselves if we allow fear and hate to turn us against each other and, and be, make us willing to give up the principles of liberty and justice that make our country great. Now's our time to shine. This is our country, and we will challenge any law, policy, or executive order that makes it less safe, that makes it less free, that makes it less just, that makes it less diverse, and that undermines the U.S. Constitution, which we proudly took an oath to protect, and we will protect. Thank you. God bless you. Please share this. Let's make this message go viral. Keep us in your prayers. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.